Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Federal Reserve. Yeah. Federal Reserve decision. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell it's intense here at Verified yep. Investing. That's what happens when we're excited. Dr. B joining me today, guys, and we were just he was just saying that he expects this to be big in terms of its ramifications. So, I do. Yeah. so what are we thinking? We're thinking there's definitely no cut. I don't think either of us think cut cut is coming today. Yeah, I'm thinking more of a neutral Fed. I think they're gonna look at the at the data and say, hey, over the next couple months we're gonna assess the data and then make a decision. I think I think that's because they did have hotter than expected you know expected inflation data come out you know in the past couple of weeks so so I, I do think neutral I'm not saying dovish I'm not saying hawkish I'm thinking neutral and I think I think the key here is that we have to think about it like you basically are in a position where we have hotter inflation like you said yep. but my only question is do they worry about the elections later this year and if you know you know do they try to do a cut early on so preemptively so they don't have to do one let's say in November or September or, yep. or or anywhere around there and that's I think that's the only question mark now let's jump over here guys I want to show you something so number one S&P volume today unbelievably <clears throat> light so again that's normal that is absolutely normal ahead of the Fed basically the big money is sitting on the sidelines so you can see today just gently kind of floating a little down a little up this will change once we get this announcement then the press conference later on you'll see some big volatility here the one thing that's catching my eye here look at the u.s dollar today this is the 10-year u.s dollar the dixie and look at how it's selling off this is a precursor this is telling me the market is starting to think they might be slightly more dovish all right, now again, if we might see a huge spike up on the dollar, which would tell us that that statement is not dovish. But right now, when you see selling in the dollar like this going in, that's telling you the dovish Fed is, is slightly expected. Them throwing the bone to the market saying maybe June would be a potential rate cut. Next up, we look at the 10-year yield. 10-year yield, let's go to the 10-year, uh, the 10-minute chart. It's also started to fade a little bit. Not much, not much in all fairness. Not like the dollar to me is a much bigger deal here, but we have come off from about 4.3 on the 10-year down to about 4.28%. So yeah, so it's interesting to see here as we go into things. One other thing I just wanted to go to here, guys, if we just quickly look, I want to go back to the Fed funds futures, kind of the, the, the idea here. I know it's a little hard to see on the screen, but this number is at 59.8% which is a chance of the hike for June. So this, the interesting thing here, this yesterday was at 55%. All right, so this is actually inched up, meaning again, it kind of goes along the lines of what the dollar was telling us that maybe they'll be more dovish. Now they may not be. I mean, if, if it's me, I'm not dovish, but again, I'm not the Fed chair. And the reason I'm not dovish is because the number one, markets are near all-time highs. Number two is inflation is actually upticking. How do you, how are you bear or, or dovish when you have inflation upticking? I think it's a very scary spot for the markets. Dr. B, what do we got on your charts here? What are we looking at? Yeah, so, so you know, what I'm looking at here is the is the S&P 500, right? The SPY, which is the ETF of the S&P 500. And so I've been looking at this line. Look at where this, this trend line comes back from. This is the dot-com boom, right? Right over here, the dot-com boom up to the uh, previous all-time highs. Let me just get my chart a little bit better there for you. And we're running right into that same trend line right here. At the same time, we have what's called a rising wedge, which is a very bearish pattern. So you have a very bearish pattern running into resistance at the same time that the Fed is having a meeting here to make a decision. So I think, you know, that's key. I, mean, I, I think that if the Fed is hawkish, you will see a price move lower here and break down from that, from that, from that rising wedge. So. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. So I'm just looking at the intraday, and again, I'm potentially looking to do a day trade uh, if we get some big volatility. I'm isolating down, and this is kind of the steps that Dr. B and I take in the live trading room to kind of think about what, where we would react. And the first thing is, I'm noticing, all right, so this is where we are on the 10-minute chart. A little sell-off here doesn't do it for me. A day trader wants big moves where there's overreaction, and then we play the opposite of that reaction. You buy support, you sell resistance. So the idea here is, this doesn't do it for me here. This one maybe, but really this gap, Phil. I mean, if we were to get a, a huge red candle all the way down here, to me, that starts to look more interesting. You've got a big gap fill here, more oversold reaction. And obviously, day trades, as we all know, folks, are very quick trades. So it might be a little tricky for me to do it here, um, being on, on live TV or live, live uh, YouTube. But nonetheless, something to watch. Now, on the upside, is there a level where I would want to short it? And that's the bigger question, because we're essentially at all-time highs or very close to all-time highs. So 
the only level of reaction where you start to see good resistance would be right up here. After that, you're in uncharted territory. And that's, I mean, in all fairness, that's about a $2.50 move here. So we'll have to keep an eye. Now we're about four minutes away, so we can watch our, our clock here at the bottom. It's getting close to three minutes, but those would be my two levels to watch on the SPY for a potential day trade. What, what do you have there, NVIDIA's up? Yeah, you know, here, here's another thing I'm looking at, right, is, is, is NVIDIA, because NVIDIA is really the new, the new Apple, right? NVIDIA kind of runs the market in terms of the equity side. And so sometimes you'll see when you're trading, you know, intraday, actually the S&P follows NVIDIA and NVIDIA follows, you know, the S&P very closely. So this is an inside bar pattern right here, this inside bar. And so this is bearish, right? If we, it's also kind of a bear flag. If we break down from this, you should see the S&P follow. And so, you know, that, that's going to be key. It's yeah, be key to watch. Absolutely. I'm just putting these some lines here on the chart as well, just so I'm ready for this announcement. Um, again, we have resistance and support levels. Again, just because you have resisted support doesn't mean you trade it necessarily. You really have to evaluate. And to be honest, trading a Fed decision is one of the riskiest things you can do because the market is so whippy at that time. So that's why I really look for extreme moves in the, in the market because you just don't know if it's going to continue in that direction. I think the bigger picture here on the charts, if we flip back to the daily chart here, is that I think we've talked about this is you do have this wedge pattern breakdown and this is actually a pattern that if it was a day tradable yeah. situation we would absolutely be shorting it on a on, on the bigger time frame so it doesn't mean what we're going to do today on this but this daily chart should really be playing out to the downside and the question like you said is is today do we have that signal you know do we get that beginning move here so absolutely. we'll find out in just a couple minutes here guys so again minute and a half to go uh we'll be i'll be letting you know what they're saying we'll also have a live feed to the press conference at 2 30 that we'll be going over Couple stocks, just quickly, guys. I showed this one in the game plan this morning. Uh, Chipotle on the stock split news surging up. I showed the measured move. We pierced the 3,000 level and beautiful pullback. There was your measured move line. It's actually behaving very much like we talked about. And then Boeing was another one. I've talked about this, how you buy the bad news when it's at technical support. The orange trend line down here, we open lower and Boeing's actually having a good move today. So just kind of cool to see that. But we're within one minute now. Let's get up our charts. So I'm going to have the S&P up here on the intraday, but I'm going to flip over to the dollar. Maybe you want to have up the 10-year yield, or you could have the dollar sure. up if you want. Yep. And we'll flip around and see what this show has for us today, folks. Pretty exciting stuff, though. No doubt about it. And I agree, NVIDIA is the leader now, and that's going to be the big reaction one to watch. Um, I also think uh, we'll have to watch gold, obviously. In fact, let me get gold ready to rock and roll here on one of my other charts. You know, Bitcoin had a had a pretty big move over the past uh, couple hours. It mm. Had a maybe a three four percent move, and so I was taking a look at that. Uh, here's Bitcoin's chart, and you can see there's actually this nice parallel channel that I've been looking at for quite some time now. You can see that Bitcoin didn't quite make it up there, right? So the top of this parallel channel is somewhere. Let me pull my screen over here. So it's somewhere around. All right, here we go. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. A little bit yep. of a pop here on the S&P. Not much yet. Sometimes, believe it or not, historically, and this is a good little stat, historically, the initial move on the announcement is not as big as the move we get with the press conference. So, again, initially, a little bit of a pop. Here's my level up here. Let's see if they push it up into that level. We can see what happens in real time. Um, but, again, interesting little reaction there. The U.S. dollar here quickly. Oh, look at that. Look at that. So the market, you almost think that someone knew ahead of time that something was going to happen here, maybe a little bit more dovish, although we are starting to reverse. By the way, on the U.S. dollar, you have this level right down here, right? So a lot of support right down in this area. We'll see if it holds this line in the sand. But wow, this is uh, interesting. That's a big drop in the U.S. dollar. I'm assuming gold is rocketing. Well, no, not that bad to be honest. Gold's getting a little bit of a bid here, not that big of a move. This is the 10-minute gold chart, so a little bit of an uptick, but certainly not huge at this point. What do you got over there? Yeah, you know, I've been noticing that SMCI follows the S&P quite closely, so, so I'm looking at this, at this wedge pattern here, right? So there's a wedge pattern on SMCI. This might be a stock to trade, Gareth, here, if, if we get down into mm. this level right here with a little dip. I like so, that. So, you know, something to consider. All right, so um, Fed, Fed does remain unchanged. 
So they're still a little not so confident on inflation being under control, but they're not as hawkish in the statement as maybe the market anticipated, which is why we're seeing the pop in the gold chart and we saw the dip in the U.S. dollar. And again, the dollar is, that's a big drop in the U.S. dollar, folks. And in general, remember, markets generally work in reverse. So, and what I mean by that, it's not very clear, but basically when the dollar falls, the markets go up. That's just the way things have been, and that will be the way things go until the economy starts to really deteriorate, which we're not seeing per the jobs data. Yeah, I mean, generally, the, the way to think of it is if, if people are putting going into cash, they're taking money out of equities, and if they're going into equities, they're taking cash out of their bank, and that's probably why the, the dollar, the DXY, moves you know, inverse. So mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, um, Take, take a look here, guys. We're getting close on the chart of the spiders to resistance. Look at this. Here's my line. Let's see if we get up there. Basically, just above 518 on the SPY, which is the S&P tracking ETF. So let's watch to see if we get up there. Um, again, that'll be an interesting thing. Even with this move up, we're not back inside of that wedge pattern on the daily chart. So again, this, like I said, doesn't really matter as much on the bigger time frame what happens here. This is more a potential for day trading opportunities. Trying to look and see if there's any other trend lines here to watch. Yeah, so if you look at the SPY here, this is the 10-minute chart, you do have this, this pivot high, right? And so we've, we've pierced through this pivot high right here, and we may, we may come down. But if we go up, right, here's our next level, okay, of mm -hmm. resistance. So you could start shorting here, you could short in here. But again, very risky to short into this right now with a potentially potentially dovish, dovish Fed. That is, and let's go on check on Bitcoin here. Bitcoin, which had rallied up into this off of, really it hit, hit the 60,000 range last night. Yeah. And we're seeing Bitcoin again rallied ahead of the Fed, kind of, and by the way, look at the dollar. The dollar was trending down and Bitcoin actually was trending up. That's an interesting little note here on, on Bitcoin's price action, but then Bitcoin kind of not getting the same type of pop that you might expect from this decision here. So just a little bit of a tidbit of information there. Let's go back to gold. Now gold's catching a bit. There you go. Gold's reacting as the dollar continues to drop. That's a big, big green candle. Remember, we had that little bit of a bullish flag pattern on the daily chart. The question was, how much was it going to pull back? That's certainly not much of a pullback. We'll see if it continues to move up here. Now, I, I just want to be clear. One other thing, and I'll kick it back to Dr. B here, is that Remember that whatever move we're seeing now, it could be totally the opposite when Jerome Powell makes some comments in about you know 25 minutes or so. So, I mean, this is this is where it's really as a trader, and I can only speak from that trader mentality. You got to stay nimble, and if you're taking a trade, you lighten your share size because when you have unforeseen comments from a Federal Reserve president, it could totally change the game on you. You can't be risking a lot in a trade during this period. You have to trade light, and I think that's really an important thing. It's one of the things I've learned the hard way. I've learned many things the hard way, but, but uh, certainly that's one of them. Yeah, so you know, here's, uh, here's Bitcoin's chart, and I, and I actually sent this chart to a couple friends over the past couple days. You know who you are. And you, know, you have this upsloping parallel, right? And at some point, upsloping parallels break down, right? So they, they break down. Look what happened. It broke down. And then it retraced here, right? Retested or retraced to the scene of the crime, as we say, yeah. and started to move lower. And you can see here that you've got lower highs, lower highs, lower highs. This is a bearish move for Bitcoin, even though we did have a big move, you know, earlier today from the lows. This is a bearish pattern for Bitcoin. And now, in terms of the the trend, we were up, and now we're starting to go to roll over. So, it'd be very interesting to see. If we can keep above that sixty thousand uh, level, you gonna make a trade, Garrett? Possibly, possibly. I'm just looking here real quick to see what we got, but I got my my platform here up, my day trading platform, folks. And again, um, uh, just put out an order in case we do pop above that that level. My level's at five eighteen twenty seven. Just not twenty seven doesn't have as much to do with just the big pierce of that even number. It's kind of right around. Oh boy, here we go. Game on. All right, here we go. In a trade here. Woo! All so, right. So you have your. Now this is a small position. Keep in mind, at least for me. Okay. Okay. So, you've so got right away, I'm putting out, putting out an order to exit if need be. All right, because I always want to be prepped here. And just All to right. show everyone, right? So this is the S and P SPY, a thousand shares short, market value of this, and here's his unrealized P and L. So let's take a look at the chart over here yeah. to see what it's doing here. Let's let's take a look here. Let me clear my screen. Okay, so, so where was your entry there, Gareth? 518.27. 518.27. So right, right in here. Yep, that was right that line, that, that high pivot. Yep. 
let's see what happens. So again, folks, the way I do it, number one, this is a very small position for me, so very, very light. If I lose a 500 bucks, no big deal. Again, you can see, I don't know if you guys can see my P&L today closed out, but 17,000, so needless to say, it's not gonna break me, and I think that's important. Note, remember what I said is that when I'm doing a trade during the Fed announcement, you don't go heavy, you go very light. All right, because you don't know this could go up another $2 on me. I don't want to put 10,000 shares on the spider short and lose 20K and wipe out a very solid day on the, on the price action. So we'll have to keep an eye on it. It also gives me maneuverability. One of the biggest things for traders is that you need to be able to maneuver where if, if I need to add another 1,000 shares at the next level, then I can do that. And that's really important to take note of, right? So, so Dr. B, you've learned this with me, is that, yeah. is that the most important thing as a trader is that you don't end up handcuffed. As soon as you're handcuffed in a trade, meaning that you used all your buying power, you literally lose the ability to control the situation. And you have to be able to control that situation here. So starting to come in the money a little bit here. Let's see. Bam, we're out. All right, there we go. 486 bucks, just like that. Nice trade. And again, nice trade. you know, listen, it's not, for me at least, it's not a, a huge amount of money considering what, I, what I'm doing here. But it's, it's the levels, it's not, notice again, I didn't get emotional and say, oh, it's up, let me just short. Regard, I picked the level. I went small, small and steady, or slow and steady really does win the race in this situation. So pretty cool there. I'm going to flip back to the charts here. Love that I could do a, a live trade with you guys, by the way. Um, wow, look at this pullback now. Oh. Amazing. I just want to point this out on the SPY, right? So I identified this pivot high right here. Gareth got in right around this level mm -hmm. and then, you know, basically pulled back. One other thing I want to show you here is there's this wedge pattern on the one-minute chart something that I use, uh, that, that we all use now in the live day trading room, and pretty interesting, right? So let me see if I can, if I can get this back to my screen. There we go. So we have this rising wedge pattern, and you look here, it hit this pivot high and then broke down from this wedge pattern. So pretty powerful. The RSI was pretty high as well. So. You've become an expert at these wedge patterns, I have to say. So, like, Dr. B, in terms of, and I'll even hop over here, is, you know, this has now become, like, a play that I didn't do much beforehand. Having him in the trading room was has been fantastic in the live trading room. It's not only added more additional trades for people in the live trading room like you just saw with me, but it's it's just, honestly, it's helped me. It's made me more of a profitable trader. Ask anyone that's in there. Like, literally, it is rock star status, but it's it's this this kind of pattern just finding these patterns, and then when you when they break, they tend to have pretty significant moves. Yeah, look at this and again, here. what I like about what you're looking at too, you're looking at multiple things, right? You look at RSI divergences, you look at different things that that reinforce the the technicals of the setup and give you a higher probability of success. Sorry for drawing on your chart no, over no, here. <laughs> Totally, feel free. Nice pullback, guys. Wow. So, so this is interesting now. So sometimes, and this is the thing, is now we have to wait and see. And by the way, I'm just going to the 10-year. Look at the 10-year. Look at that flush on the 10-year to 4.23, and then it's all the way back up here. Remember, markets work inversely to the dollar and the 10-year. So I would almost bet if we go to the U.S. dollar chart, we've had a big bounce too. Yep. It's not as big as the 10-year, but you can see, look, we were all the way down here. That's when I got in that short is when we were down in that range, and then the bounce occurred in the dollar, and the market came back in. So pretty cool stuff there. Yeah, yeah you probably, the, the more uh, that Jerome Powell says, the, the more the market, you know, sells off and gets worried and, and analyzes every single, you know, word he says. So, yeah. So very interesting. Taking a look, uh, SMCI bounced a little bit. Let's see what NVIDIA, NVIDIA too. Okay. Yeah, a little bit of a pop. Nothing too crazy, though. All right. All right. Take a look here. So again, guys, you can see this is NVIDIA intraday. This is the intraday 10-minute chart. A little bit of an uptick with the market. Now it's coming back in. Now again, as a trader, this is actually another great lesson. All right, let's go back to the spider. So here we have the level that I took. All right, as a day trader, I have learned that if you go back to the punch bowl too many times, it ends up biting you in the in the you know what. So so basically, a lot of you would say, well, if it goes back up here, would you reshort at that level? My, the answer for me is no. Once I make that money, that that level, the first hit of a level is your highest opportunity for success. Now, again, it's not to say that in three days from now, if we came back up here, like let's say we go like this, and then three days from now we hit a double top. That's a that's okay. That's now a double top. But hitting it right again, that's not a double top in terms of at least my analysis. It's too much risk to go up. But I will say this: I have this longer-term trend line 
which if we go to the daily chart is this one, this bigger wedge. Now the problem with a bigger wedge is that the accuracy of where my line is is a little bit tricky, right? So, so that's the other negative is it's harder to pinpoint exact levels versus on smaller time frames. But in general, I would say up in that range would be something of interest to, to take note of. And by the way, just looking at the daily chart, I didn't realize, but that high on the spiders that I shorted was actually the, the all-time all -time high. high. So it was yeah. a double top in yeah. addition, right? So it was the level, but it was also a double top, the highest pivot point on the S&P, which again, gives you that extra kind of factor if you want that extra factor there. So pretty cool. Yeah, you know, one thing I noticed uh, recently here, and you know, we, we, I, I look at uh, higher highs and lower highs and higher lows. Let's see if you can see my chart here. Let's go back to my chart. So notice here on the SPY that you had this, this higher low, higher high. This wasn't quite a, a higher low here, but higher high, higher low. Then you had a lower high, lower low, right, right on this trend line, now with a big double top. So this could be this, the, the last push before the markets break down. We'll see. I mean, we're very close, you know, very tight in this wedge here. We really are. So, And again, just going back here, we saw the markets beginning to bounce up again. Dollar is starting to go down, which makes sense, right? So again, that inverse relationship continues to play out. Now, again, I think for the most part, the markets are digesting it. It seems the market is interpreting the Fed statement as being slightly less hawkish, maybe more favoring that rate cut. In fact, speaking of which, let's go back to the Fed funds, right? So if we go to the Fed funds, bear with me, there we go. Now mm. let me refresh this. So before I refresh it, remember it was at 59.8%. Yep. I'm gonna bet that that is higher. We'll take a look, maybe I'll be wrong, but in general, the markets are reacting like now June is, is much more on the table. Bear with me as I refresh and we punch in, bear with me here, I gotta get the right, there's the probabilities. And if we bring that up, there it is. Look yeah, at this, guys, 64.5%. Now, honestly, wow. that's still not that. I mean, it's not like it's 80% or anything, right? So, I mean, it, it is higher, but my guess is, and again, you know, always the possibility of error, but depending on if Jerome Powell reinforces his, his dovish kind of tone, then this number probably gets in the 70s, you know, 75% from 60. So initially the statement's being taken a little bit more dovishly, like there's more of a chance of a June cut. But again, if, if he confirms that in his statements, which will be out in, you know, what do we have now, another 15 minutes or so, then that will absolutely go up even further. So yeah, it's interesting, man. It's, the Fed is walking a tightrope. They are. Um, inflation again upticking, you know, and uh, we'll jump in kind of here. There we go. Yeah, they, they were expecting, what, six rate cuts this year? And sorry to cut you off, but now, no. you know, maybe three, possibly two. I have to go back and li listen to what Jerome Powell said exactly. But yeah, they are definitely walking a tight rope. It is, it is. And again, we'll get more inflation data in the coming weeks. I think next week we might get PCE. I have to double check that. But again, we just had CPI last week and, and something definitely to watch for. Um, and, you know, the question is, does Jerome Powell already kind of know a lot of these numbers? He probably does. Uh, and again, it's it's a matter for me is, is if you didn't have the election, I don't think they'd be cutting in June. But if, if that's an issue for them and it does seem like it could be, then June might be where we get that first rate cut. And the question is, is, you know, there's very, it's very few times where you'll see unemployment as low as it is and the Fed cutting rates. That's right. very unusual. Right. Unemployments were around what, 3.9, 3.8, yeah, somewhere yeah. in that vicinity. And, yeah. and uh, you know, I think uh, we have one more week until we get into that data too, which yeah. will be interesting. But, um, but again, folks, let's just jump back in. We'll kind of keep an eye on things. There might be another trade. You just never know. Ooh, the dollar's starting to pop a little bit here. Let's see on the S&P. Should be a, yep, the ah. S&P, look at that. So this is, and, and by the way, this is why it is dangerous to trade the Fed decision. I mean, again, I did it, I, but I did it very meticulously light, definitive level, um, for me light, and I understand that for a lot of people it's not light, but for me that was light. Um, but you have to just be aware that the market is interpreting data live here, uh, and that makes a big difference for how you know, the, the levels can go get crazy. They really can get crazy. Yeah, here's the follow through on the one minute chart, right? You can see, you can see that we broke down, right? So we broke down, we came back up, kind of retraced to this uh, resistance line and now we've moved lower. So mm -hmm. yeah, really interesting. Now, if you wanna play the opposite game, and, and by the way, 
one of the things that a lot of people don't understand is that traders are agnostic in terms of with whether they're going long or short. We let the charts tell us. And so, you know, like I said, you know, going into this announcement, I said, all right, short up here. And let me change mine back to yellow. So short up here, right? But also we have support here. If that breaks, I don't, by the way, I don't think I would buy this level because I'm a little too worried about it breaking, but I, I did give you that lower gap filled down a little bit lower where there'd be a long opportunity. And so again, a, a good trader, you don't, you don't go in with pre preconceived notions. You don't go in like, like a lot of investors are like, oh, I only want to be in Tesla because it's the greatest company in the world. And I'm not picking on Tesla. It's, it could be Apple, it could be Nvidia, it could be Bitcoin. But again, that's okay if you're a long-term investor, you're playing the long-term scope of investing. But as a trader, if you think that way, you're going to lose money. It's just it's guaranteed lose money because markets don't just go up. Things just don't go up. They go down sometimes and you, you tend to get freaked out in those downward moves. What do you got over here? Yeah, I'm just looking at that gap fill. It's a, it's it's over 1% lower from where mm, you were talking about or, or, or where we're at now, right? So so that's a big move. We'd break that that support line and you'd be at gap fill. So, so definitely a riskier... Uh, trade there, but we'll have to see if it goes down there. We'll see. Let's um, let's quickly, while we have a little time before we get the Fed's uh, commentary, the Jerome Powell commentary, I just wanted to go over earnings after the bell today. Micron reports after the bell. Um, I'd be interested to see if you have anything on this in terms of your bias or not. And by the way, I do not have a position in Micron. I don't plan on getting a position before earnings. It's too risky. But just looking at the chart, I, a couple things that I noticed. We tried to break out here and it failed. And now we came back in this channel, right? So you have a very defined kind of uh, channel, if you will. And, and so again, if you go up, I mean, the question is, can we take this out again? Or does it have that move to the downside? But again, I don't see like, it's not like we have a bull flag here or a bear flag or anything like that, where I could potentially get an edge on the chart. What do you got over there? Yeah, one thing I'm looking at in Micron, it looks like this already played out, but you do have a head and shoulders pattern, a little choppy here with all the gaps. You know, but here's your neckline, right? And so we did we did break down through this neckline, came back up, broke up through. But still, again, going back to the lower highs and higher lows and, and, and the whole analysis, right? So higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high. And then essentially a lower high here, lower low, lower high. All right, and now we have a lower high here as well. So, so, so the move, the trend has really been up. And now you're starting to see it roll over when you zoom into the one hour chart. And so, yeah, the, the semiconductors really rule the market. So it's going to be Ew. NVIDIA, AMD, AVGO, a Micron. And so let's see what happens. Yeah, it looks like the S&P is declining a little bit more here. So again, it's interesting because we had this big pop, again, stopped right on a dime. And, and again, if you're, if you're someone who you know, doesn't believe in TA, Totally respect that, but you can't deny that, again, I gave you this line right before we started, the, got the Fed decision, it went there, and then that was where the top is. Now, remember, it's all probabilities, right? Um, so it doesn't guarantee it, it just puts the odds in your favor, and that's that's the beauty of TA. It's it's being, being the casino versus the gambler, but what's crazy about it is, as a casino, very few casinos are making money 70, 80% of the time, which when you get to be a seasoned trader, and I've traded for almost 25 years now, that's that's generally my track record for trades. But yeah, interesting to see that level right up there. Um, and we'll watch to see as we get into these comments if the market gets another lift. And by the way, that's often, I don't wanna, I don't wanna pre, pre say anything, but a lot of times you get the initial reaction on the Fed, then it pulls back, and then it kind of gets the secondary lift on Jerome Powell's comments. It's like the direction is, is re essentially, whatever the Fed statement is, if they take it as dovish, the idea is oftentimes he will reinforce that during, during the commentary, during the presser, and that's then the market finally breathes that sigh of relief and says, okay, you know, up we go. Uh, but again, as I said, I, as of now, I wouldn't be looking to reshort that level. What do you got over here? Yeah, so, you know, we talked about mm. the uh, semiconductor industry, right? So let me just go back to my screen here. So if, if you look, this is the ETF that tracks the semiconductor uh, industry. And I think my uh, screen got messed up here. So let me just. That happens to me all the time. Yeah, so, yeah. let's see. Let's you gotta give it, it a second to give come up second, here. Okay. Hey, let's do it again. I've learned these, these are finicky screens. They're great, <laughs> amazing, but yeah. Yeah, all right, thanks. There we go. So you have this, uh, the, the SMH, this is a semiconductor ETF, right? It has NVIDIA, AMD, AVGO, all the big semiconductors. 
we've had this amazing rising channel, and I see this almost as like a blow off top, right? We blow, blew through here the resistance and then ripped back lower. And now if we continue to stay below this trend line, right, that should bring, bring the semiconductors lower and the markets lower too, so. Interesting. Yeah. So I'm just looking at Meta here. I'm just kind of seeing what Meta's doing. Meta's just consolidating. Same kind of chart as a lot of these had. Basically, you could see it's almost identical to the S&P. Upticked on the Fed, had this pop, and then it pulled back. Now it's starting to move up. I'm assuming the s and is kind of doing the same thing. Yep, we're starting to inch up a little bit. This is where, as a psychology, you know, studier, uh, if you will, is that People, as we get closer to the press conference, you're starting to see either short covering or like, oh, maybe he's going to say something dovish. And so you're starting to see a little bit of buying coming in ahead of this, which is just uh, literally eight minutes away from him starting. So, again, we'll be going live to that. We'll be kind of dissecting it live, what he says, at least for the first 10, 15 minutes. And then uh, we'll just continue to watch the charts. Maybe there'll be another trade. Again, it's hard for me to keep track of everything I watch on the charts in general in, uh, behind my computer with all my screens. But, again, if I see a trade here, uh, I will absolutely take it again all right yeah and you can see you know I'm look, looking at Bitcoin here seeing how it reacted to the to the move initially on the S&P right so the S&P moved up just like Bitcoin here so so Bitcoin moved up and then the same thing it pulled back and it, it, it's kind of just consolidating here it'll be interesting to see if it's a bullish consolidation and moves higher or if it's going to move lower and follow the S&P. Bitcoin still is a risk asset. Long term, I'm very bullish on it, but it is still a risk asset. When the S&P sells off, people will panic. They'll push the sell button and sell all risk assets. So when, yeah, very interesting. When you're looking at this Bitcoin 10-minute chart, Dr. B, what, do you see anything? Like I, I almost saw an inverse head and shoulders, but I really don't see another shoulder over here. I see this one, but it doesn't look like anything to me, no, right? You know, I, I do see this. Uh, let me just uh, grab yep. your, your screen here. There you go. So I, I do see this parallel, right? So I, so I see a parallel channel. Mm -hmm. Okay, that kind of grabs my eye. So maybe it's like this. Oh yeah, look and at so, that. So yeah, bearish, bearish. Uh, this is a bearish pattern, right? So typically these break down. So wow. definitely bearish on the ten minute. That would be quite something, considering overnight we saw that low in the low sixty thousand range before this kind of rally back off of the lows. And then I would assume that so you basically have this pivot here, which which we're just you know we're we're pretty close to at this point. This will be some short term resistance on Bitcoin on an intraday basis. If it gets above that, you could see that move all the way back up here. Mm -hmm which takes you north of 66. But, uh, but yeah, interesting, again, you have, let me zoom out on this again. Let's take a little bit of a bigger view on this chart to try to get a little bit more um, kind of perspective on it. Oh, okay, so, and this, by the way, this is why it's so great to kind of look at these charts is, look at this, look at this line. Oh yeah. Right here, yeah. that's a great one right there. So that, that gives us a very clear basis for um, looking at resistance. Look, one, two, three, collapsed. And then, so if we rallied up to basically 66, that would be significant resistance or potential breakout if it gets above that level and really stays above. Remember, don't trust moves above major levels until it really establishes itself, AKA 69,000, we move to 73 and change, and then look at where Bitcoin has retraced to. So, and by the way, look at 2021, 65, we got above 65 in, in October, November, and then we know what happened to Bitcoin after. Mm -hmm. So you just have to be aware is that breakouts, a lot of people, and this is just one little point I'll make here, is like, a lot of people are like, like, oh, I got to jump long. Yes, if it confirms, but how many times have we seen it go like that and just fool everyone? And so you just want to be aware of that. I'm not a big f person that buys breakouts unless it's a, there's multiple factors. Yep, yeah. I'm just taking a look at the Fed Funds uh, chart right here. So you can see, hopefully you can see this. Yeah, so the Fed Funds rate, right, 5.33 here on the chart. This was the 1970s when people were paying, you know, 15, 16 percent on mortgages. Uh, I think my parents were lucky; got about a 12 percent mortgage back then somehow. But you know, also what's interesting is this. Can, can anyone guess what this peak was here? This was the pre, you know, pre Great Recession uh, peak. 2007. So 2007. Right? Yeah. So they held those levels high until people started to lose their jobs. The housing market collapsed. And then the Fed funds rate came down 
to kind of rescue the economy. So we're right here at that same level. So that's kind of an interesting that is. Uh, realization I, I saw. Yep. Yeah, and I think looking at looking at uh, housing prices, right, I think the difference between then is, you know, because a lot of people will tell you is like, oh, well, interest rates are historically low, right? But, it, but yes, they are still historically <laughs> low, but also housing prices are up much higher relative to where they were. Like I still remember we bought a house on Long Island when I was in third grade. We moved to New York, Long Island, and I think the house was, I don't know, $175,000 mm. for a house on Long Island, which is crazy now. But but again, you know, now that house is probably 750000 or whatever. Yeah. yeah, it could be. So again, you have to take into account the other factors. It's not just like, oh, historically we're low. It's like, well, yeah, but what have asset prices done to really make it hard for people to afford homes at this point? Yeah. Yeah. All, all the liquidity has, that has been pumped into the system, you know, has definitely changed the, the charts and the graphs, yeah. you know, a bit. But yeah, but uh, so we're, we're just about yeah, yeah, we're just about we got three minutes until the press conference, guys. And again, just looking at the S and P, we're honestly, you can see, we're basically done almost nothing. We're beginning to creep back up a little bit still uh, on the S and P 500 here. Uh, again, we have our level here, resistance up here, which was already rejected. Price was rejected. We know our support line down here. Um, if we start to break lower, we want to see do we get below here, and then if it continues down or not, we'll start looking at key levels on this. But again, there'll be some interesting questions. There's always some interesting questions. Uh, I wish I could ask him a question. Frankly, I have multiple questions. <laughs> I would love to love to know what Jerome Powell says. But um, needless to say, we don't have. I don't have that luxury to be able to ask him questions. Um, let's look quickly at the Nasdaq 100. Nasdaq 100, almost identical chart popped and then pulled back and then a li little bit of an inch up here. Uh, so that's pretty non-eventful as we speak here. And then just again, Bitcoin, let's zoom in on Bitcoin again. Yeah, Bitcoin just chopping sideways. Now again, this is where time frames become interesting. I wanna just point this out, another good lesson here is that if you look at Bitcoin right now, what type of pattern is this? Yeah. Bullish, right? But we were just saying a minute ago that there was bearish consolidation. Why? Let's talk about that. So this is the this is literally over the last hour. It's 10 minute candles, right? Depending on your time frame, that's going to determine. And this is where you have to decide: are you a day trader, swing trader, or long term investor? When you zoom out on the chart and you look at a bigger time frame, you zoom out. That's where you get more of that bearish kind of price action where, again, we're down here and we're chopping sideways, kind of an inside bar bearish pattern. But my point is, again, is that determining time frame, like you can have a 10 minute chart that's bullish, an hourly chart that's bearish, a daily chart that's bullish. And again, you have to be able to juggle that and decide, well, which one are you trading? Which one is the pattern setup that you're going for? Yeah, that's the key. When you learn to read the charts and all of those time frames come together and are saying the same thing, that's when it's really powerful. Yeah. I just want to point this out, SMCI, this is a big uh, semiconductor, actually a smaller semiconductor company, maybe only about $60 billion compared to NVIDIA, which is, you know, in the trillions. But this has had an epic run, I think, from uh, where, around three, 400 up to 1,200. Yeah. But look at this, right? So we had, we had this head and shoulders pattern, and it really played out pretty nicely here. If you, you can take the measured move by looking where the head is to the bottom of the neckline mm -hmm. here, and then essentially replicating this this distance right here and replicating it down right here. Would there. you say that's about it? So that looks almost identical, yeah. Pretty amazing. And then if you look at NVIDIA. Do you actually, before you jump away from this, yeah. can we throw on the RSI? Because I'd love to show them the negative. I think there was a negative divergence on here, too, on the RSI. Sure, let me put that you on. You just have to, we'll have to clear the chart. I can help you here. Yeah, go ahead. Here it is. Yeah, so so guys, this is the power of putting, let me come into camera focus here. This is the power of putting these factors together is that you have the head and shoulders, which is a bearish factor, and then look at the negative divergence. Price was going up, look at the high and the lower high, high, higher high, powerful stuff. Yeah, it really, I mean, like you teach in, in your course, you say it's a look behind the curtain, and it shows you that this move is getting weaker. There are sellers starting to step in, big sellers starting to step in here. You can see there's some volume here, not too much compared to over here, but there was a lot of volatility. So you can start to, to tell where the, the move is likely to reverse. Not perfectly, not all the time, but you can start to set up for, say, in this case, a short. And then also on NVIDIA, if you look at NVIDIA, we really are forming uh, a possible head and shoulders just like we were on SMCI. And again, the measured move on that, I would have to, I have to pull a uh, ruler here, but... Uh, let's see if I can do it on my chart. 
Uh, let's see here. So the possible measured move on NVIDIA would be about $130 lower from, from the breakdown of this. So possibly seven seven twenty on NVIDIA. Yeah. Wouldn't that be a drop? Yep. Amazing, folks. So, uh, you behind me here, guys. You can see I got. We got the. We're just waiting for Jerome Powell to come out. We'll hear live what he has to say, his comments initially, and then we'll also kind of go back. We'll probably keep this up on the screen at least for the time being, and we can go to the S and P on your chart and kind of keep an eye on where things are going. Looks like again we've just chopped since that one pop, kind of now now coming back in ahead of this. Yep. Yep. Now let me ask you a question here. So you're looking at this chart. Do you consider bear flags on the RSI to be important or like it doesn't really, you know? You know, like in this case, right, you, you do have okay. this upsloping. Oh, there he is. All right, here we go, guys. My colleagues and I remain squarely focused on our dual mandate to promote maximum employment and stable prices for the American Dual people. mandate, of course. <laughs> the economy has made considerable progress toward our dual mandate objectives. Inflation has eased substantially while the labor market has remained strong. And that is very good news. But inflation is still on the too back. high. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ongoing progress <laughs> in bringing it down. Is I love being the peanut gallery, by the <laughs> yeah, way. Right, the right. path forward is uncertain. We are fully committed to returning inflation to our 2% goal. Restoring price stability is essential to achieve a sustainably strong labor market that benefits yeah, all. Today, the FOMC decided to leave our policy interest rate unchanged and to continue to reduce our securities holdings. Our restrictive stance of monetary policy has been putting downward pressure They're on going to continue to reduce their securities holdings, which is their balance sheet. The labor market so there was, there was some chatter that they might stop continued. that. The risks to achieving our employment and inflation tightening. goals Continuing. are right. moving yeah. into better balance. And they said they're 100 percent committed now to 2 percent. I don't believe them, but saying it matters. You can see a little bit of a downtick, not much yet. <clears throat> Recent indicators suggest that economic activity has been expanding at a solid pace. GDP growth in the fourth quarter of last year came in at 3.2 percent. For 2023 as a whole, GDP expanded 3.1 percent, bolstered by strong consumer demand as well as improving supply conditions. Activity in the housing sector was subdued over the past year, largely reflecting high mortgage rates. High interest rates also appear to have weighed on business fixed investment. Almost nothing. In our summary of economic projections, Something's committee coming. participants <laughs> generally expect GDP growth to slow Looks from last year's pace, yeah. with a median projection of 2.1 percent this year and 2 percent over the next two years. Participants generally revised up their growth projections since December, reflecting the strength of incoming data, including data on labor nice supply. Trade you had there. Thank you. The labor market remains relatively tight, but supply and demand conditions continue to come into better balance. <laughs> Over the past three months, they can hear us payroll still, right? job gains averaged 265,000 awesome. jobs I was going to say, <laughs> the unemployment have, you know, these, rate has these are touch screens where we can freeze the screen. Right. 3 I have this urge to freeze the screen and put Strong a mustache on it. Strong job creation has been accompanied by an increase <laughs> in the free. supply. Feel free. That's okay. Uh, uh, we won't stoop to these levels. <laughs> He's a good, good guy. He's a good guy. All right, we're starting to see a little selling. And a continued strong pace of immigration. So I would just say here we... has been easing and job vacancies have declined. So we're Although probably talking there's going to be a little narrowed, bit. Oh, labor demand it. still exceeds the supply of available workers. A little bit of support FOMC right down here in this area. expect the rebalancing in the mm -hmm. labor market to continue, easing upward pressure Notice on inflation. Notice this was a, a lower high here. Yes, lower high. Right. Employment rate projection. High, lower high, and, and now lower low. Yep, a little bit of a double top. Unfreeze it, see where we are. At the end of next year. Yeah. Yep. Here we go. Inflation has eased notably over the past year, but remains so far. My just initial reactions, I don't get the sense that he's that dumb. No, and, and you know he, he kind of maybe seems a little neutral, right? He's yeah. not, he's not PCE hawkish. He's not dovish. Rose 2.5 percent over the 12 months we'll ending see. in February, and that excluding the volatile food and energy categories, are we up four since PCE was prices this the, uh, rose. Yeah, this was the end, the right there. Okay. Longer kind of term flagging expectations in. appear to remain for those of you out there watching. So you had this little move up and then a little bull flag. Households, businesses, there you go. So just little 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 tidbits well looking back again, just that educational market. stuff. The median projection in the SEP yeah, you're for asking total about PCE. The, sorry, sorry. I was just going to say, look at the percent this year, 2.2 percent trend line. Year, oh, a little parallel. Percent little, little parallel. Could be. Break out above all-time highs. 
The Fed's monetary policy actions are guided by our mandate to promote maximum employment and stable prices for the American people. My colleagues and I are acutely aware that high inflation imposes significant hardship as it erodes purchasing power, especially for those Harping least able to meet the higher costs of essentials, like food, housing, and transportation. We are strongly committed to returning inflation to our 2 percent objective. The committee decided at today's meeting to maintain the target range for the federal funds rate at 5 and a quarter to 5 and a half percent and to continue the process of significantly reducing our securities holdings. As labor market tightness has eased and progress on inflation has continued, the risks to achieving our employment and inflation goals are coming into better balance. Overall, not <clears> much of a move. No, really. so We believe far. that our policy here, rate yeah. is likely at its peak for Minimal this tightening Minimal response cycle. so far. And that, Can you actually put in a parallel on, on the actual charts sure. to sure. keep it there? Because I think it's almost an appropriate perfect parallel. To begin parallel. dialing back policy restraint at some point yeah, right, this those year. Lows. The economic outlook is uncertain, however, and we yeah, remain highly attentive side. to inflation. Right, so there. Yeah. We are prepared to maintain the current target range for the federal funds rate for longer. bring up this side here to the to right to that bottom because oh, sure. I think it'll match up better. We know that reducing policy restraint too soon or too yeah, much could result in a reversal of the progress we have seen on go. inflation yep. and ultimately require even now, tighter policy bullish, right? so to get inflation back to 2%. Falling parallel is bullish most of the time. At the same time, the yeah. reducing policy restraint generally, too late guys, Generally, too this pattern could formation, could this would be a flag pattern that would actually be slightly bullish. In considering Here's any adjustments highs, to the target right? so range for the federal funds rate, parallel, the committee will carefully we break assess incoming highs, data, the evolving rate. outlook, and the balance of risks. The committee does not expect it will be appropriate to reduce the target range until it has gained greater confidence that inflation is moving sustainably down toward greater 2%. confidence. So, that, so they're not willing to of reduce the target to range sides of inflation until they see more and confidence and that inflation is weakening under in the labor market. Again, not to me, not really dovish. Response. But the markets are starting to we'll uptick here. To that bullet. This is where, see, this is the beauty of it, right? Is that I don't know if we'll break out here, in but our SCP, to me, FOMC I'm not hearing anything dovish, but the markets are always the truth teller. And then you have the pattern formation here, right? And the pattern charts are always in charge. To be the yeah. most likely yeah, scenario I mean, the, the going forward. Market does what it does. If the economy and evolves go. as yeah. projected, the media participant through. projects that the appropriate level of the federal funds rate will be 4.6 percent at the end of this year, 3.9 percent at the end of 2025, and 3.1 percent. Trading at the folks end of watching literally tick for tick on the one Still minute chart here. Medium, medium <laughs> longer term funds. Now, would you buy this breakout, Gareth? These projections I can't. are not yeah. a can't risk, right? plan. Well, you you've already rallied this far. Now, if, and I think this is one of another great lesson, right? As if you break out and we retrace to it, you buy that, right? The retrace sure. to the scene of the crime. Because now you get an even Turning better to our entry. Yeah, our right securities holdings have declined by nearly $1.5 trillion since the committee began reducing our portfolio. All these things we talk about every day, every morning. Trading. At this meeting, fun. we discussed cool. issues fun. related fun to slowing the money, pace right? of yeah. decline <laughs> in our securities holdings. While we did not make any decisions today on this, the general sense of the committee All right, is that I, it I want him to get to the first couple of questions. Those are always the, mm -hmm. the big ones, and then after that, we can go away and we'll just talk about the charts. Issued. We can have him go away, but. The decision to slow the pace of runoff does not mean just to that answer our balance sheet will ultimately shrink by less than it would otherwise. You know, sometimes I look at different otherwise. patterns on the RSI. But rather and allows us to approach action. that ultimate level you know, that more gradually. Helps. But also sometimes in particular, if you're looking at a tight range the pace of runoff of price will help action, ensure a smooth we've got transition, a trend line on the RSI. reducing the possibility that down, money markets experience you know, stress pretty bearish, so. and thereby mm -hmm. facilitating the ongoing Yeah, one of the things I was just noticing here is like, consistent you kind of you almost have a trend line on the RSI reserves. where you have here, 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 right? And then we broke down we and then retraced to bringing the scene of the crime and coordinates with the resistance right there. And, to keeping and you wonder if it now, does that mean as we pull back right, like exactly. that? I mean, again, yeah. I don't know. Restoring but, price stability but I was thinking is essential. Too. And folks, again, one other thing to kind of just understand is that we're constantly analyzing, we're constantly To conclude, we understand that our actions We're constantly trying to discover new things because it's a game of pennies Everything in a way where like if you can gain a slight mission. bit of edge where you get let's we, say the Fed will do a few better trades a month i mean that can be tens of thousands of dollars yeah. over the course of a year stability. millions over the course of life so and and we don't hope pray think or predict that the levels are going to go in a certain way right we look at the probabilities of the chart based Chairman, on the pattern um, here's steve the, uh, yeah let's take a listen projections show somewhat higher core inflation they also show uh somewhat stronger growth um what should we infer from this notion that, on average, rates were kept the same this year, but inflation is higher and growth is higher? Does it mean uh, more tolerance for higher inflation and less of a willingness to slow the economy 
to achieve that target? Well, it, it doesn't. No, it doesn't mean that. What, what it means is that you know we Steve Lee, uh, we've seen <laughs> incoming uh, as you, as uh, as I pointed out in my opening remarks, we did mark up our growth uh, forecast, and so have many other forecasters. So the economy is performing performing well, um, and the inflation data came in a little bit higher as a separate matter, and I think that caused people to write now, one up, thing uh, their, just a quick inflation. jump in here, going back to the uh, charts. Nonetheless, one thing that I would consider buying, and I don't know if I will, but down. if we started to make and, uh, a bullish so pattern like this, you can well, then, you, then you're not the buying a you surge, you're, you're buying bullish consolidation. So again, that just might be just, just a, you know, something to watch. It doesn't look like it's going to do it. It might just rip here, but remember, this pattern is still bullish. We said that right away once we saw it. We're strongly committed to bringing the inflation down to 2% over time. That is, that is our goal, and we will achieve that goal. Markets believe we will achieve that goal, and they should believe that because that, that's, what, that's what will happen yeah, over, over time. And they But we stress achieving over time. that 2%. I know. And so, I, they say um, that, and then, like, if, if most people are like me, they're like, show that all right, yeah, sure you are. Once we hit a recession, and, and you know, like. Well, you've been saying for a while, you know, that 3 to 2% is going to be sticky. Yeah. And I think you were, you know, six, Hi, six nine Rachel months Siegel ahead of people yeah. saying that. Thanks for taking our Finally, questions. Finally, the articles are coming out you saying the same thing. Been saying that really All right, so we have a potential breakout here on the coming, spiders, guys, just above this channel. Shown that meaningfully in the CPI or the PCE. Does that challenge your assumption about when there the shift will finally break High pivot through? coming up. That point. There's no bullish consolidation, so, so this is where me as a disciplined trader, I'm not, I'm not chasing that, it. No big uh, deal. That the it's got to be my, rents, lower my market setup or nothing. That we're saying will as soon show as you up compromise what you're looking housing, for, uh, you're basically giving your money away. It's when market. you get in trouble. Yeah. There's a little bit of uncertainty about when that will happen, but there's real confidence Now, same thing, if we get bullish consolidation, like let's say it stalls out here and it starts going like this, maybe later there's a play on it, but it has to form the right setups. Otherwise, for me, it's not It's just not worth the risk. Why give back money? Why lose money? Over time, we will. And, and uh, I would assume that what we'll continue to see is we'll see goods prices coming into a new equilibrium where they're going down perhaps not as quickly as they had been earlier. Again, we yeah. just touched that same uh, high again. This is now the third hit of that level. As, as, I'm going to actually flip away from him now, guys, is again, you know, all right, so we got, I think we got the general non-housing vibe here of what's going on. Some combination of I just want to take a look at the different chart the here. We had here's the 10 minutes. So we've been looking at the one minute, but here's the 10 minute chart piercing that upper level. Remember on the one minute, we had the, the sideways consolidation, right? You had the this pattern formation, which again, usually leads to a breakout that looks to be what's happening here uh, to me. Yeah, yeah, and I think, you know, you, you do have this resistance line. So just because it's breaking out here at all-time highs, we, we will likely now, since we're breaking out, come up to test. the top of this, uh, you know, line. Yeah, yeah, that might be might be a level all short if we get up there. But again, as of now, I'm still, because it's a daily line, I'm a little bit more skeptical of those because, again, it goes, the longer a, a line goes back and you connect it through more pivot points, <coughs> the more variance of error there is for that that setup so we are pulling back a little bit here um what do you got the one minute up still or you got the no, 10 no minute? this okay. is the 10 minute you know same same type of line here mine might be a little different than yours but this is what what our eyes are going to be on you know for the next you know day or so right and so we're going to be looking at how the price reaction in, in this area does it come right up and pull back does it come up break through and then pull back does it come up consolidate and move higher very you know that's what we're going to be looking at for sure cool all yeah. right well um let's go back to center screen right here and um i think that's that's where we'll end it today it's i think great. that was yeah. fun that was great a lot session. of fun guys I, we really hope you enjoyed this the education that we're able to bring the the trading experience um we're going to try to do these every fed meeting so again give us lots of comments if you liked it um if we can improve on anything let us know as always uh don't really have to ask you guys to do that but nonetheless um thank you for joining me buddy yeah no thank you and thanks, uh thanks check us me. out at verified investing guys take care take care